You're listening to Better Than Before with Tony Richards. I'm excited. I got an outstanding guest today to talk about startups and business. An enthusiastic and experienced entrepreneur with an MBA and four successful businesses to her credit, Andy Lyons is the founder and chief startup officer of Startup Life with Andy Lyons, where she coaches startup founders while providing free tools and resources to do-it-yourself entrepreneurs, launching, branding, and building their businesses. She has a podcast of her own called The Startup Life Show with Andy Lyons. Her earlier companies include Venture Back College Broadcast, a broadband media portal with over 50,000 viewers per day, Goddess Granola, a gourmet food product Andy took from recipe to manufacturing, branding, and distribution in 27 states, and Bring Back Desire, a website devoted to sharing tips, tools, and resources with couples seeking more love and intimacy in their relationship. She loves sharing her startup wisdom as a volunteer mentor at local nonprofit accelerator program e for all MIT's Launch X and Mass Challenge. I'm so excited to welcome the always effusive and delicious Andy Lyons to the podcast show today. Good morning, Andy. Good morning, Tony, and good morning, listeners. I'm so delighted to share this moment with you. And in the startup world, we're all about the possibilities, not the guarantees. That's awesome. We have been friends now for, I don't know, five, six, seven years. That's right. Met on Twitter and Andy's just always happy and excited and full of wisdom and knowledge. And as you can tell from her bio about a broad range of subjects, I want to talk to you a little bit, first of all, today about you live in Boston now. Yes. Where did you grow up and what were the what were the surroundings that you grew up in? Well, I grew up in a New England, Southern Maine, Massachusetts, town, middle class, always jumped into the city, but I was very typical post-World War II middle class life. So mom stayed at home, dad went to work, girls were taught how to do home ec and things like that. We were certainly encouraged to go to college, but nobody was talking about what do you want to do with your life? What's your career? What floats your boat? So it was, you know, horseback riding, golf, tennis, um, <laughs> then skiing, lots of skiing. So that's how I grew up in that environment. That's awesome. I think when we met a few years back, you were right in the middle of doing your romance advice and, right. and that sort of stuff. What kind of got you going on that? Well, all my businesses came to me and called me to them. You know, I didn't set up one day and say, oh, boy. I can't wait to go into food manufacturing. Let's do this. <laughs> it came to me. Same thing with the college broadcast. And then Bring Back Desire. Who talks about that? Nobody wants to talk about that. But I've been with my darling man for 32 years. So I understand, you know, two children and all the vicissitudes of life that can throw a relationship off and intimacy is really what you want with your beloved. But how do you do that day after day, month after month, year after year and not become roommates? instead of lovers and stay tuned in. So I screwed up the courage, much to many of my friends, like, what? You're doing, yeah, I heard a lot of gasps, but I did it. I felt really called to do that and be the bold one to put it out there for any age, really. It's about deepening your own knowledge and having more vulnerability and intimacy in the relationship. So that was a fun experiment of a business. It really served a lot of couples as well as singles out there. And it taught me everything I needed to know about online branding because I launched it in early 2011. And so I had to learn all the platforms and it really helped me cut my teeth on such a difficult taboo topic. And not only was I able to brand that really well, bring back desire, but I also was able to keep my personal professional brand going online. And so I felt so grateful for the business. And in the spring of 2014, I kept seeing folks online giving awful information to people launching businesses. It was driving me crazy. And I said, well, look, I got to fix that. I'm going to start my own. Yeah. <laughs> and then I launched, I you know, first went with Possibility Partners, and then I morphed it into Startup Life to have a better, stronger brand. 
Well, like a lot of us who do this kind of work, you uh, have a podcast, you do speeches and presentations, you work with clients in your practice, you volunteer at accelerator programs. What's your favorite thing to do? Would you rather work one-on-one with somebody or would you rather speak to a large group? Well, as much as I love sharing the Andyliciousness, you know, in front of a great group of people, it's the one-on-one that has a true ripple effect because my ability to dig in, roll up my sleeves with the startup founder, it changes their lives. Whether their business has the outcome that they hope for or not doesn't matter. They are changed for life. They will go on and do whatever, do another business, this business could work out great, or go back to working for someone and they are a better person. So I feel like it not only helps them, but generationally the ripple effect from one-on-one working. I feel like I'm that way too. You know, I'll have people from time to time say, you know, where can I see you speak? Why don't you speak more? And I, I do my share of speaking during the year, but my favorite thing is working with that CEO and their executive team and spending a day or two with them working on strategy and execution. There are plenty of speakers out there, I guess. I just enjoy the one-on-one relationships. Well, and you know, Tony, I wished I'd had me with my businesses So I always tell my clients unlimited emails and texts because I know how scary their life is and how filled with uncertainty it is. So for them to be able to reach out to, you know, a strong, stable force who completely understands what they're going through, that is also more fulfilling for me. Now, why coaching startups? You know, there are a lot of different kinds of business coaches out there and not very many of them work specifically with startups. How'd you find that as your thing? Well, I've always loved the startup model, the launch brand and build that business. So I knew I wanted to do that. But what came to me from volunteering at E4All was that I prefer working with the underserved, underrepresented, and certainly underestimated startup founder. And that's the person who has no resources. They don't have the pedigree degree, which in my neck of the woods, you know, Harvard, MIT, I mean, it goes on forever, the smarty pants degrees around here. And they don't have the connections. One of the things I had to do in order to be able to work with this type of person, which I just love doing, is I had to change my business model. I had to lower my fees to something that could be slapped onto a credit card and not hurt their financial condition because the financial condition of a startup, someone who has all those necessary ingredients, but not all the outside sources that many other startup founders may have, they can't afford the 5,000 a month, 10,000 a month typical consultant fee. I lowered mine to 500 a month. I asked for you know a three month commitment, but you know we can put it on pause, we can end it anytime. And boom, I mean, my roster became filled immediately. And with exactly the type of people I wanted to work with, I get so excited for these people who are working full time often, or have just been laid off or have had something in the back burner they've been wanting to do. And they go, okay, I don't have to do this alone. Andy's going to help me. (laughs) You've worked with all these different kinds of startup people. What's a definition of a leader in a startup? What kind of attributes do you need to have in order to be pretty successful? Well, first of all, investors will say they'd like to see a founder market fit. But you know what? I believe that you can be coming into a whole new market that you've never been in. But if you have that level of tenacity and resilience and you are able to stay flexible, meaning as you start to prove your value proposition, you get feedback from the market or the customer saying, "Mm -mm," and you have the flexibility to pivot. You find a way to be really comfortable with a high level of uncertainty and you love problem solving and you have that innate understanding that you don't know the answer right now, but you're going to figure it out. It's true driver abilities and finally the ability to sell the vision. I don't care if you've come up with the best new tech gadget for mankind, humankind, if you can't hustle that. It's not going to happen. So I look for those intangible ingredients in a founder because everything else you can learn, you can learn how to grab that business model, manage it, tighten it up, do the numbers, get the great team on board, all of those things you can be taught, but you have to have that innate ability that you are not going to stop. 
So in the last four or five years, we've been hit on television with all these shows revolving around startups trying to get funding like Shark Tank. There's the one with Butch and Rooster. There's the one with the restaurant people who are looking for the restaurant people to give them advice and fund them. So in the process of watching a lot of these TV programs, you see all kinds of interesting businesses. What's the most interesting business someone came to you with? Well, the folks who have come to me and are in beta stage, I can't actually talk about them right now, Okay, but a phenomenal company that I had the pure joy to be their team coach and mentor through eForall called Invisaware. These two kids coming out of UMass Lowell, she, the female founder, has double degree in engineering and computer science. He's engineering, top of the class, but all of 22 years old. And they came up with this smart safety jewelry concept that was outstanding. I mean, the minute I met them, my eyes lit up and I said, oh yeah, this is great. So Invisaware is a beautiful either locket on a necklace, very small and discreet, or on a keychain or a bracelet that you can hit twice if you are in trouble. So you don't have to wait to dial 911 on your phone. It will automatically ping off your phone and it will go right to 911 and you'll have on your app chosen the family or friends that you want to know. So you could be traveling somewhere far away from your family and be in trouble and they're alerted, but they may not know where you are. Well, it bounces to 911 who knows exactly where you are based on the cell tower that you're closest to. It is a wonderful device. Wow. I highly recommend everybody go to invisaware.com and check it out. So exciting. And these kids, very humble backgrounds. And of course they don't have the, any long-term work experience. They're fully funded. And they hustled to make that happen. They went through the EFRAL accelerator. Then they went into the Mass Challenge accelerator. And then they did a phenomenal crowdfunding campaign as their go-to-market strategy. And they should be delivering, I think, a early July. Wow, that's fantastic. So good. And the nicest, I mean, I just say the best manners <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Lovely, lovely founders. That's very cool. Now, I'm a faithful follower of you on Twitter, and I go to your website quite a bit, a faithful reader of your blog and some other things. And one of the things I've always found interesting that you say is most plan A's are proven wrong. What do you mean by that? Well, first of all, you hear people say, burn the bridges, the ships, do this, you know, forget plan B. That's crazy. Entrepreneurs are known for coming up with great ideas, even in the shower, and they think it's the best thing that's been created since sliced bread, right? And then, given we're entrepreneurs, we're gifted at rationalizing anything, and reality can become distorted. That's why you have to have plans that you are flexible with until you find out who wants this product. So there's 26 letters in the alphabet. Be ready to come up with plan B, C, D, E, F. You do not care. As long as you have that desired outcome on the horizon that you're trying to get to, you can take many routes to get there and many plans to get there. And as a, a good friend of ours, Blair Glazer always says, innovation is an iterative process. So it takes different iterations to get where you wanna go. Blair is a great thinker also. Working with all these founders and entrepreneurs, what's a common mistake you see? I just spoke to it. Value proposition. Again, a lot of founders come up with a great idea. They get the prototype. They go into beta. But the only people they're talking to are their family and friends who are all going to you know, say, yeah, I love it. Woo. That doesn't mean anything. You have to do the blind market surveys and studies and get the data from people who don't know you, don't care about you, and are not even in the marketplace. And you find out through a good, solid customer survey who and what are they going to want with your product and prove your valuation your value proposition before you get to market. It will save you so much time and money, or you'll be pivoting into plan B, C, or D based on the feedback you get. But it'll be market feedback because I always say marketing without data is like driving a car without a steering wheel. You've got to get the numbers and the data to prove 
you've got a good idea. The amount of people who can come up with a business idea are plentiful, right? Right. Not so many people can actually turn that idea into a business model. There's a big difference in sitting in a bar and having an idea on a napkin and then actually making it a viable business. When I see companies pitch, Tony, um, and I go to a lot of pitch events and it's really one of my sweet spots is pulling together pitch decks, especially my techies. They just love their gadgets. Oh my gosh, or their incredible apps or their incredible idea. And they spend so much time talking on the problem and the solution where the most important part of your business is the business model and your ability to execute, your ability to understand what customer acquisition is, your ability to understand what how much runway you have before you run out of money. All these things are so important. So I've got a great idea. I've got a business. I've kind of got it started up and I've got a plan. What's the most important thing on a day to day that I'm going to have to master? Well, along with psychologically getting comfortable with being uncomfortable and uncertain, <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, yes, yes, you've got to know your cash flow. You've got to have your 12 month cash flow projection with you every day. You've got to see how the money is flowing. You really need to know your numbers. And to me, that's one of the most important tools that you have as a founder to help you manage your business. Even if it's seed money that is floating the boat until you can start generating revenue and start selling your product, you've got to know that form, not an income statement, not a balance sheet, a cash flow projection. This is where you're looking every day at what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Now, is Invisaware your most fabulous success story or do you have another one? Within my group, well, I've got, you know, I've got a great food truck guy who was at Comcast for 17 years in customer service and the company moved their customer service from Massachusetts to New Hampshire. And for those who couldn't make it, they had a nice little six month package and he chose to take that six month package. Here he's at home with kids, right? He took a real risk and he created a food truck, a Cuban food truck called Empanada Dada. And when he hit the ground running, it's been cash flow positive ever since. And he delights people everywhere he glows with his food. And so, you know, a company just doesn't have to be something big and fancy. It can be something interesting and um, and something just local. Local is good. Gosh, I love that story. You got all this andy liciousness. How, how do you maintain such a positive outlook? <sighs> well, first of all, my nature is I am a flotation device. So when I get down, I bob back up. But that said... To get myself jazzed for the day, Tony, I love to listen to music that just gets me rocking and rolling, whatever you know, tune that is, that just sort of goes, whew, I get my body moving, I do inspirational readings, and a ton of gratitude statements. Running your own business just isn't easy, okay? And mindset is going to get you further than anything if you can find ways to feel great about your day. And one more question just specifically for you. Doing what you're doing now, what, what's the one thing that maybe you don't enjoy doing, but you had to learn to love it in order to get you to this point in your, oh boy. your journey? I am terrible at sales. You know, that was something as a business owner I had to learn to do. And it's, you know, this is your idea. This is your product. It's even harder than selling someone else's. And I had to get really comfortable. I was okay at selling the vision with investors and team members. But when it came to actually closing the deal, I really had to work at that. And I'm not saying I'm the greatest at it, but that's a skill set I had to practice at. I'm going to uh, preach at our listeners here for a second about the benefits of coaching. Coaching is for people who are good, and it's for people who have good ideas and they need help. You know, the best in the world always have coaches. People tend to think of coaching as the last-ditch effort to try to save an idea or save a person. I look at it the other way. I look at it as if you've gotten to a certain point in success, you need a coach to help you take the rest of the steps. And only professionals use coaches. So you coach startups and mm -hmm. startup founders and startup businesses. So I'm sure you believe that as well, that people do better if they have coaches. 
Well, do better. They're going to get there faster because they have someone holding them accountable, someone who's giving them unbiased feedback. So it's not a friend or a family member or a colleague. Obviously, they need to put your name on the list. But if someone were looking for a startup coach, what kind of things should they look for? What kind of advice would you give them? How do they vet somebody if they're looking for somebody to work with? Well, I think you, first of all, have to feel in alignment with the person. Like, this is somebody that I can trust, that I have faith in, who's going to help me. And so that, first of all, is very, very important. But in the business world, I want to make sure you founders look for someone who has the nuts and bolts business chops to make you focus on the business model. So many people are out there about positive affirmations or they focus so much on marketing. Marketing is not enough. You have to be able to do every part of launching and branding and building your business and you need to focus on the data and the business models. So make sure they're not just all talking about how you feel. Such great advice. All right, I've got a list of standard questions that I ask every guest who is on better than before. So are you ready to run through my list of 12 questions here? You bet. Best memory that immediately comes to mind for Andy Lyons? Hiking in Ojai Valley with my husband. Number one hero in your life? Same thing, my husband. What does he do? He is a renowned energy storage expert. Wow. So he works for Canadian Solar and in creating wonderful energy storage deals. What's the top value you subscribe to? Enhancing. So I just naturally run up to somebody. Whenever I see someone, I see something special about them and I tell them. Most important person in your life? Me. Your favorite thing? Laughing. Your favorite food? <gasps> oh, I got stuck on this, Tony. I like everything. Okay, crusty, hot out of the oven bread with lots <laughs> of butter or olive oil. Right on. Most beautiful place you've been to? Oh, hi, Valley. If you could describe success in one word, what would that be? Fulfillment. How do you want to be remembered? Ah, she had great energy. I love being with her. Advice for a younger you? Focus on being in business, baby. What's your favorite sound? My husband's voice. Wonderful. And what's your best lesson you've learned? Just say no. Set boundaries. That's great. Anything <laughs> else you want to promote or tell people about? Well, I'd love to share with people, you know, when you're starting a business, sometimes you've got to raise money. And I have a powerful pitch deck for investors. I want you to check it out. It's on my website, andylyons.com. It's a wonderful one month service where I get you a pitch deck ready to go. You can pitch your business to investors when you only have three to five minutes. We do a one page business plan. It's a wonderful one-page business snapshot for investors, and it really prepares you to raise money, whether it's 100K from family and friends or a million plus from angel investors or even higher for venture capital. It's an important part of helping your business move forward, getting the capital you need. So check it out. It's $750. And you get 30 days of unlimited email support and coaching with me, plus two 45-minute coaching calls. So if you've just started a business or you're thinking about starting one and you're in a startup phase, check out Andy Lyons. She's got the ability to quickly identify winning strategies, effective resources, and creative solutions that'll work for you and your business. Andy, thank you for being on today. Oh, Tony, I cannot tell you how honored I am. It was so great when you pinged me at my favorite bar, Twitter, <laughs> and invited me to join you. Yay! And, and thank you to listeners. Keep going. It's always about the possibilities. You bet. I'd like to thank Andy Lyons for being my guest today. If you want startup advice, she's the queen and a lot of andy -liciousness. I hope you got some value out of that. Every edition of Better Than Before, we provide you with a guest that's going to provide value and teach you and educate you. And we definitely bring our own leadership and business lessons to the show. We'll see you again next time on our next edition of Better Than Before. And until I talk to you next time, don't forget, everything gets better when you get better.